Jeep is f <laughs> I was talking to a dealer just yesterday and they said they wouldn't even take another dealership if it was free. Dad, Stellantis has been laying off executives. Customers have stopped buying cars and it seems like all their brands, including Jeep, might be going under sometime soon. Let's break it down. Sounds good to me. And you might as well start with the head of Jeep because I don't know. I think we're on our second or third one this year. And and perhaps, perhaps if they offer a great severance package, I would even offer myself up to run it for two or three months before they kick my ass out. So we can start there. Over at Stellantis, they have been turning over their executive team like crazy. The head of Jeep most recently in North America was let go, and prior uh, uh, turnover has happened. Significant turnover has happened over there. Why is there turnover, Pops? Because their strategy has not played out particularly well. You know me, I love data. Car price inflation is to blame. The Jeep and all of the other brands over at Stellantis, they increased their prices significantly, over 50% in the past five years, and that has led to dwindling sales because I don't know, man. Do you want to buy a $110,000 Jeep? I don't think so. Well, um, um, there's one or two people, but not a significant number of people. And and yes, they decided to go up market. They they thought the future for, for their brands was up market. And what we're seeing is that their previous customers weren't upmarket customers to begin with. And so they've kind of pushed their previous customers out of the picture and they're not attracting new customers. So their inventory for all their brands is just building up at rates that are unsustainable for dealerships. And on top of that, they decided not to really help either the customer or the dealership figure out how to move the products. So it, it is just, it's getting uglier and uglier by the week. Yeah, let's talk about that. Move the products. What do you mean? Incentives. So we have seen as new car inventory has built up in the United States of America, the automakers, they've put more money towards incentives. They've actually invested in, you know, 0% financing, $5,000 off here, $2,000 off there. Well, the latest industry data we got showed that one brand in particular was not increasing or were not increasing their incentive spend, and that would be Stellantis. They also, when you look at this chart, they also are the brand that has the highest market days supply. That means the most amount of inventory relative to how fast it sells in the United States of America. It makes absolutely no sense. You would think the brand that has the most inventory, the, the slowest selling vehicles would be the ones that would actually have to spend the most money to incentivize the sale of those vehicles, but that doesn't seem to be the case over at Stellantis. And and you mentioned it, Dad, dealers. That puts pressure on dealers because they have to pay their floor plan cost, which last time I checked, lots of dealers are actually going out of business or having to send their inventory to the wholesale car auctions because they just can't pay their bill to floor plan it, to pay the interest to hold on to that inventory. Talk about a partnership, man. It almost seems like Jeep and Chrysler, Dodge and Ram are just kind of shoving inventory down the throats of their dealers and saying, y'all figure it out. And and when manufacturers do that, and this is, this is obviously not the first time I've seen something like this happen in the industry. I mean, I spent 43 years in it. Um, but when, when situations like this happen, whatever goodwill a manufacturer might have had is totally lost. And the reason for that is the manufacturer has said to the dealer, we know you're stuck with inventory. We know that many dealers have 20, brand new 2023 Ram pickup trucks and brand new 2024 Ram pickup trucks and brand new 2025 Ram pickup trucks. Now that should never happen, but the manufacturer has caused that to happen. And what they're expecting to happen, they're expecting their dealers to eat those losses, not the manufacturer. And the manufacturer doesn't want to help. Well, dealers, I can tell you from experience, new car departments for the longest period of time at many, many dealerships were the losing portion profit-wise at a dealership. New car departments typically were not particularly profitable. Well, it's one thing to be hardly or barely profitable. It's another thing to be, well, exceptionally not profitable because 
you've had to take a haircut on every vehicle that you've sold, and the manufacturer hasn't helped you out in any way whatsoever. Here's an example, Dad, from the Car Edge Car Search. We've got a 2024 Ram 3500 pickup, and you can see here the market day supply is 339 days because within 100 miles, and this is in Maryland, within 100 miles of the Baltimore area, there are 294 of these for sale, but only 39 have sold in the last 45 days. And to your point earlier, the dealers have not only the 24 Fours, they also have the 23s and the 25s. There are no other brands that have three years worth of new vehicle inventory on their dealer lots right now. And I mentioned floor plan earlier. I'd love if you spent a second on it, Dad. Floor plan is actually what the dealer has to pay because they finance this, in this case, $76,000 pickup trucker. And yes, in this case, the dealer finances the invoice price, which we also have back at caredge.com. So the dealer is financing a $71,447 purchase. And they have to pay interest on that. And if you've got 23s, 24s, and 25s, that some of them have been sitting, this one in this case is 57 days, but some of them have been sitting for 570 days. Like that's a really big interest bill that you have to pay every month. It is, it becomes unwieldy at a certain point when the dealer principal has to sign off on a, uh, on an expense check of $250,000 to carry their inventory for a month. It is incumbent upon both the manufacturer and the dealers to figure out a way to move the product at a minimal loss. And if the brand decided to go up market when the customers decided not to, um, then I would think if I were a dealer principal that the onus falls on the manufacturer's shoulders to figure out how to move the product. And that could be huge customer incentives. It, it might be cash rebates. It might be 0% financing. And then even bigger dealer incentives for hitting sales goals that are set by the manufacturer so that the dealer is encouraged to to discount the vehicle even further with the hope of getting this big fat check from Stellantis at the beginning of the next month. So Q4 is right around the corner. End of the year is the best time to buy a new car. If we can help you in any way, obviously check out our website, caredge.com. But dad, do you think that means that if you've been waiting for a Jeep deal, a Chrysler deal, a Dodge deal, a Ram deal, that those deals are right around the corner? Because like you said, someone's got, you get either going to have to pay today or pay tomorrow. The OEM, in this case, Stellantis, is going to have to pay up for the situation that they've created. Does that buyer's market, great time to buy one of these cars, trucks, SUVs in Q4? Is that what you're thinking? I, I would think so. And I would think so for two reasons. Either Stellantis steps up and, and helps the dealers move them, or the dealer realizes he's going out of business and he just sells the crap for whatever he can get for it. Either way, as a customer, there's a great likelihood of you getting a tremendous deal.